Welcome to the Inspiring Tech Leaders podcast with me, Dave Roberts. As part of the Stantec.io podcast series, I recently had the pleasure to speak with Andy Burnham from Stantec about how municipalities and utilities can quickly develop sustainable financial plans using the Stantec.io FAM solution. The financial analysis and management system enables real-time financial modeling and helps you understand the impacts of changing conditions. Many thanks again to Stantec for allowing me to share this insightful podcast with the Inspiring Tech Leaders audience. I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Stantec.io podcast, where we speak to our scientists, designers, engineers, and architects who are working with our digital practice teams to develop creative, technology-forward approaches that accelerate and improve our ability to solve the most difficult challenges facing our clients, communities, and industries. I'm Dave Roberts, and on today's episode, we feature Andrew Burnham. Andrew is a vice president within the Stantec Management and Technology Consulting Practice and is based in our Tampa office in Florida. Andrew is going to talk today about FAMS, the financial analysis and management system that helps our clients with financial planning and scenario modeling. Welcome to the podcast, Andrew. Oh, thanks, Dave. It's great to be here. So let's start off by learning a little bit more about your own career within Stantec and how you got involved with financial modeling. Sure. Well, I came to Stantec after working for a, a large combined gas and electric utility for a few years in their rates and regulatory affairs department. And uh, ultimately, I found much of that experience is really transferable to the water sector and local government relative to things like financial planning, utility rates, asset management, capital funding, even policy related issues. And so ultimately, I I sought out an opportunity um, to provide that type of uh, consulting service to local governments and communities. And that's ultimately evolved over time to where today I now have the privilege of leading our management and technology consulting practice at Santec throughout North America. And our group actively seeks to inspire communities with innovative solutions and creative management strategies that are all designed uh, to really intelligently enrich the quality of life within these communities and ultimately help contribute to their own social prosperity and equity uh, along with financial sustainability. Fantastic. So why was FAMS first created and what have been the underlying technologies utilized along the way? So our financial analysis and management system, or FAMS for short, has been around for decades as a consulting tool. We initially developed it to do financial planning and forecasting to support a number of consulting engagements, ranging from rate studies to developing financial forecast and support of bond or debt issuances to performing various types of business case evaluations. And through that process and evaluating a number of different scenarios, we found that an interactive approach where we would work live with our stakeholders um, and the clients, um, various departments was very effective and efficient towards driving consensus uh, to particular solutions or a solution to be recommended for implementation. In core to that approach, being successful was having a tool or modeling system that we could operate in real time that would allow us to change assumptions, test all the what ifs, and easily compare scenarios with a clear and comprehensive understanding of their outcomes from a financial perspective. Hence, we created FAMS as part of that process, and it's been core to it ever since it was created. In fact, initially, we developed FAMS to run on Lotus 123, so I'm probably dating myself a bit here, but we ultimately moved it to the, the Microsoft Excel platform in the early 2000s. And as we sit here today in the 21st century, we really find ourselves at another point where technology is changing and evolving and utilizing cloud-based technologies that are available today really is unlocking additional opportunities to enhance the capabilities of FAMS as well as the user experience with interacting with FAMS. I certainly haven't heard about Lotus 123 for quite some time. So, uh, yeah, what, what a journey that's been. <laughs> so, uh, what are some of the key features and functionality of FAMS and what makes it unique? Uh, there's a, a rather long list of, of key features and functions of FAMS that you know, I could go through. I think you know, the most notable ones that stick out to me are just how easy it is to create and save ranges of key inputs or assumptions. If you wanted to look at alternative plans of growth forecasts, ranges of low, medium, or high, or alternative rates of inflation, or um, alternative levels of, say, rate increases for utilities, you'd be able to input those, save them, so you wouldn't have to retype them. You could easily recall them and manage various combinations of those key inputs and assumptions. 
Similarly as easy to doing that is creating, comparing, and sharing scenarios. When you combine those ranges of inputs, assumptions, and different types of underlying source data that drive those, you're able to quickly compare scenarios, save them, either keep them as uh, for an individual user to view or share them with other users of the platform. And what's fantastic about FAMS is that as you're doing that, it also provides version control. So you can have simultaneous access anywhere from any device. Um, it may be a bit small for a, a, a you know, mobile device, but you know, things like a laptop or you know, potentially something along the lines of a tablet, um, it would work very well for you to have access anywhere while other colleagues within the same organization are also accessing the tool. So it provides that ability to have that simultaneous access and version control with that instant access. Additionally, the uh, application has been designed with an intelligent interface, so it responds to the different size of screen you're looking at, and it moves along with a different viewing size of screen that you might be projecting onto. But I think uh, more important features around the data management side of things. FAMS is able to allow you to input data directly into the interface, copy and paste it into the interface from a desktop application or a spreadsheet, or even directly connect with your various systems um, that would provide information core to financial planning, such as operating budgets or capital plans, and be able to manage different versions of that data as you run through financial planning and forecasting scenarios within the FAMS application itself. And along with that customization to how data is incorporated into FAMS and how it's managed, it also can be customized relative to how information can be exported out of the application to feed back into those systems and how specific key performance indicators could be tracked, such as reserve levels or borrowing levels or affordability levels um, as part of the process. And I think one of the core components that has long been a staple of FAMS is its ability to look at capital funding optimization strategies. Um, continuously for various types of organizations, there always seems to be resource limitations for capital funding. And so the application can apply to find rules um, and also apply for any given scenario, those rules based on available funds to really optimize how we pay for our capital projects so that we can maximize the amount that can be funded while minimizing any needed rate increases that might be um, otherwise required to the funding sources for that capital program. And all these features and all these functionalities that we've built within FAMS have really been done through a combination of you know, three different groups within Stantec. We have our subject matter experts, folks that have been doing consulting for local governments and utilities that have intimate knowledge of the financial planning uh, forecast for local governments and utility organizations. And that subject matter expertise has really been embedded into the FAMS application by a team of dedicated software engineers and developers that really know how to do the coding. And those two things have been combined with a third group at Stantec that really focused on the user experience and the user interface itself. And these experts are all design, are all oriented to making the platform as easy to use as possible, visually appealing and intuitive so that it has the form and function that we know local governments and utility systems need to have in a responsive financial planning tool. And you mentioned earlier on there about customization. So what types of customization can you do for individual client needs within FAMS? You know, there's really not too much of a limit in terms of the customization that can be done within the FAMS application. Um, some of the more common applications that we have customized revolve around incorporating additional features or calculations. This might be um, bringing in uh, various affordability analyses or calculations so that as you evaluate alternative capital programs and want to understand the rate increases associated with funding those programs, we then understand how that impacts customers in different parts of the service area and how that impacts affordability for those customers based on their water use characteristics. So we can add in additional features that analyze affordability or that offer additional ways to look at more robust borrowing programs that could incorporate a number of federal funding, state or local funding initiatives or more conventional private market placement opportunities. Or additionally, bringing in calculations of fiscal impacts. What are the positive impacts to revenues as well as potential additional expenses that may come with different types of land uses? So these types of additional calculations are things that represent some customization that we've done commonly within FAMS to meet specific client needs. We also 
we'll look at incorporating additional complex calculations that may be relative to certain um, expenditure requirements and how they might be calculated per interlocal agreements or bringing in um, different types of revenue recovery mechanisms that maybe don't exist today and having a process and a framework to calculate those and also to integrating just detailed demand forecasting or other existing capital planning tools so that they can more seamlessly integrate with the interface as opposed to having to you know type in the data yourself into the application. So you mentioned there about client needs. Can you provide some examples about how FAMS is actually helping clients? Well, the FAMS application fundamentally helps address a, a not outstanding need that has been there for many organizations, which is just a, a fundamental financial planning activity that can be useful in developing you know, capital budgets or forecast of operations expenditures and, and developing sustainable financial plans. Many communities have their annual audit and their development of an annual budget, but they lack that fundamental forecasting uh, component to their financial planning. But absent and outside of that core financial planning need that FAMS addresses, there's some specific uses of FAMS that really speak to how it can be additionally used to address some complex situations. So a, a good example is a community in, in Minnesota where they have a coal plant that's being decommissioned that represents about 40% of its tax base. And so we used FAMS to model the financial impacts of what happens when that plan is decommissioned and what happens to the revenue and expenditure streams associated with that decommissioning and compare that to their baseline financial performance to help them understand the impact of that decommissioning, but then also to identify the uh, opportunities for redevelopment of the site and for those different types of land uses, what the anticipated revenue and expenditure impacts might be so that they would have an understanding of how those different types of land uses may have the best financial benefit in return on investment to the community as they decide how and what they would like that plant site to look like in the future when it's redeveloped. Fantastic. So what's next on the product roadmap for the FAMS platform? In the near future, we'll be looking at releasing a, a newer version of FAMS that allows for self-entering of information and through a guided setup process. And this will allow users to get up and running with FAMS very quickly with a higher level of detail with um, minimal to um, no needed support from our consulting team. So this allows users to kind of have an out of the box version of FAMS so that they can quickly address some financial planning, capital funding needs, and also maybe for smaller mid-sized communities that don't necessarily need to have as robust a customization as what other uh, systems may require. Additionally, we'll be looking at bringing into the FAMS continued enhancements to existing features. This will include a capital prioritization tool and certain predictive analytics that will allow us to take trends from historical data to seed some baseline forecast in the application of trends in operations and maintenance spending, trends in capital spending, trends in demands or the customer growth, a number of different areas that we can seed some baseline forecast within the application to really help the user assess you know, their financial forecast and to develop some of those assumptions as part of developing those financial plans. And beyond that, we'll also look to incorporate additional modules, such as a robust demand forecasting tool, as well as an asset management tool that will really help us connect different level of service options to not only their financial consequences, but also to risk and understanding what will happen to the condition of the infrastructure and potential levels of risk based on the condition of that infrastructure with different spending plans that are run through FAMS. And if I wanted to learn more about FAMS, what should I do next? Well, it's really as easy as going to stantech.io um, or also stantech.com slash FAMS. Um, in both places, we're, you'll be able to access several overview and demonstration videos, be able to see more detailed feature descriptions, as well as additional examples of how FAMS has helped communities address a variety of, of complex challenges. Um, additionally, uh, you'll be able to request a demo from those sites and can certainly reach out to me via either of those websites or email as well at andrew.burnham at stantech.com. 
Well, it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you today, Andrew, and I'm sure our audience will have enjoyed learning more about FAMS and the journey that you've been on with the product. So thank you once again for being part of the Stantec.io podcast. Oh, I absolutely appreciate the opportunity and look forward to uh, keeping everyone informed about the, the journey of FAMS. Thank you for listening to the Stantec.io podcast. If you've enjoyed listening, please tune in to future episodes where we'll continue to explore how digital solutions are shaping our world. In the meantime, you can also visit our website at www.stantec.io for further information. Please remember to subscribe to the podcast and stay tuned for more inspiring tech leaders.